we're basically living in the biggest fiat bubble ever created by man. Satoshi is a time traveler. Game theory is quite easy. If, if you sit on the wrong world reserve currency, you will get poor. I don't think gold will be worth less. If you have the gold price and the Bitcoin price, the Bitcoin price will fly away and the central banks and the countries sitting on, on only a gold standard will become poor. Bitcoin exchanges are like the black hole from the fiat system to the Bitcoin world. They actually forced Stripe to offboard us. I thought like Stripe is a big company. They should be able to fight it back. They said, okay, if you don't offboard BTCX, we will make sure that Amazon will not have the Swedish payment rails. All the major American funds and banks were negative to Bitcoin. But now it's really shifting. Almost every week you see Larry Fink say something spectacular about Bitcoin and Donald Trump eating burgers for Bitcoin. One of the biggest and most influential families in Sweden is the Wallenberg. They were co-founding the Federal Reserve in America and the Swedish Riksbank is still the oldest running the central bank in, in the Western uh, countries. I saw a Bitcoin movie. It was a blockbuster movie. It was broadcast in, in all movie theaters all over the world and the name of the Bitcoin movie is Barbie. Bitcoin is um, it's a feminine force. It's not a masculine controlling or dominant force. It's an inclusive force. The best way to predict the future is to build it yourself. Bitcoin exchanges are kind of the 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 black hole from the fiat system to the Bitcoin <laughs> world. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's uh, it's it's a it's a very difficult uh, black hole <laughs> to facilitate, <laughs> as any black hole in this universe. Uh, but it's it, it's really a, a, a narrow balance. How do you uh, manage to integrate to the fiat system and the government and 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 all that comes with with that and then on the uh, which is a struggle uh, and, and quite a hard struggle and and on the other part you have uh, the bitcoin community which is super supportive and cheers you on and helps you and and uh, so so I, I wouldn't be able to to navigate this with, without the help from all the the bitcoin community so in a sense, you have like a, a two-parted job. So the first, the, the one thing is this amazing thing with the Bitcoin community and onboarding Bitcoiners, but then you also have to integrate with the fiat system. You're like yeah. be, between the matrix, <laughs> the, the operator in between. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very schizophrenic, I, I could say. Some weeks... You, you come from a Bitcoin conference, you're filled with energy, vision, and you're like, oh, yeah, we, we're going to change the world. It's going to be so good. We have a gold standard and, and you're so enthusiastic. And then, you, you know, get into your nitty gritty with, with um, whatever it is in, 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 in the government or banking space. And you, I mean, for example, I can have a really good example. We, we were at the Bitcoin Atlantis in Madeira, the team, and we had a great time. It was a wonderful uh, conference. And Madeira is a beautiful island. And we had a really good meeting. We met with some uh, Stripe uh, crypto bros. They, I mean, they, they're not really Bitcoiners, but but they're crypto bros. So, so they, they kind of <laughs> support us. And we, we got this uh, lovely payment rail in Sweden that is very difficult to get. And then uh, two months later, association of banks in Sweden decided, oh, no, 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 a, a Bitcoin company cannot have these payment rails. So then, then they actually forced Stripe to offboard us. And uh, I thought like, okay, Stripe is a big company. They, they, they should be able to, to fight it back. Uh, but the funny thing is in, in, uh, in response, so uh, the, the, the biggest payment rail in Sweden, which is called Swish, they said, okay, if you don't offboard the BTCX, uh, we will make sure uh, that uh, Amazon will not have the Swedish payment rails. So th th they were actually in the basket, a Bitcoin company and Amazon. And, and you know, <laughs> that's how, that's, I mean, in a way it's like, oh shit, they really, don't like Bitcoin in one way, or afraid. I don't. I don't know actually the, the purpose why 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 they did it. But it's um, Sweden and uh, the banks in Sweden. They 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 don't like Bitcoin. Do how, how do they try to to control that? Because I feel like it, Bitcoin gets more and more adopted. We now have like BlackRock and on our team side, we have big companies on our team. We have even like the president of the of the probably most influential uh, government in the world uh, probably soon on our side so like 
how, how is this still a thing that banks are like, no, 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 like that is a, is a bad thing. Yeah. It's a peculiar uh, question uh, because uh, it is exactly what you say. Uh, I mean, if you go back four years, that would make sense because Bitcoin was a lot smaller. Still, it was big, but it, it was, you didn't have BlackRock. You didn't have, I mean, all the major American uh, fund uh, funds and banks were negative to Bitcoin. But now it's really shifting. It's, it's uh, I mean, yeah, almost every week you see Larry Fink say something spectacular about Bitcoin and, uh, and Donald Trump eating burgers for Bitcoin. So I think it's, it's going to be a difficult move for the Swedish banks and the Swedish central bank because they're very verbal in anti-Bitcoin. So I, I'm not sure how they are going to like, well, we, we were wrong or, oh, no, we were always like Bitcoin. I mean, they, they, they really take in a negative position. So it will be interesting to see how they manage to get out of that. I don't know how, but it will be difficult in- for them. It's also for me the always the game theory aspect of it is super interesting when we think about that because we have co- countries that don't adopt Bitcoin or are really vocal about, uh, against Bitcoin, which then probably leads to regulations that are against or are not liking Bitcoin, and which leads then for good Bitcoiners that the, the higher tier Bitcoiners to move. Like if you're a high tier Bitcoin, you have a lot of Bitcoin, maybe you have Bitcoin companies, you will not uh, deal with a, a government that doesn't like you. You're just like, oh, like, okay, I guess I can, uh, if I really want to also do the same thing in El Salvador, in America, in another different part of Europe. Like th- this game theory, it will be really interesting uh, to see. I just see now um, uh, three uh, different, really popular German speaking, uh, influences in Bitcoin, uh, with big accounts who moved to El Salvador, all three of them, which is like, wow, like they, they're really moving, they're voting with their feet. So that's, that's a problem for those countries. I feel like is, do, do you see something in, in Sweden also where like people actually leave or is in general, uh, if you don't try, try to open an exchange, the, the regulations around Bitcoin quite friendly or how, how is this, do people, uh, close bank accounts because you transfer something to Bitcoin exchange. How how is this? It's I would say it's a mixture. Uh, in general, Swedish Bitcoiners are very quiet and and secretive. If they have a social media account, they don't use their real name. I, I'm I'm really the exception. I'm kind of the only one. I'm you know I'm driving around with a car with a Bitcoin license plate, and I have you know Bitcoin stickers everywhere where I go. Uh, and my my real name on all my profile, so so I, I'm kind of the the exception in Sweden. But but it's uh, I would say it goes back to 2014 when the the tax authority in Sweden they declared war with Bitcoin. Uh, they attacked my company uh, a lot. Uh, three years they they were trying to dig and dig and dig and find something. They barely found anything, but they 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 tried anyway. And some other people they 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 sent to jail, not because they were uh, doing like criminal activity, but because the 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 tax filing they they thought was incorrect uh, or not good enough, basically. And it's really hard because back in two thousand and fourteen, there were no guidelines at all how you should tax Bitcoin. And the community was like, oh shit, I don't want to go to jail or I don't want to have that exposure. So everyone is very secretive in Sweden. What actually happened uh, uh, just a few weeks back is that the person who was sent to jail many years, uh, he was freed from all uh, charges uh, in in an appeal that came. So that was a really good news for Sweden and, and the tax authority lost. Uh, so, so that was extremely good, but, but it, and anyway, it did a lot of damage. So, uh, and the, and the banks are very erratic when it comes to offboarding. Of course, a crypto company like us, they, 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 they offboard, but for personal, uh, private people, it's a little bit on how good relationship you have with your bank uh, manager. Uh, sometimes they shut down without any barely any questions or, or and sometimes they just you know send us the documents and uh, we uh, we actually have a service where where we help out with producing 
uh, Bitcoin AML documents for transaction purchase or or sell. So so we we get usually uh, high net worth individual or companies that that need help with that. So so uh, and and then it usually there is no problem. So it's a bit uh, yeah, but for companies at large like a crypto exchange, it's almost impossible. Do you see, uh, we talked about that before recording, do you see the Mika actually changing a lot of those things, uh, legitimizing Bitcoin to a certain extent and making it just normal that Bitcoin is another asset just like Tesla or another asset like uh, gold or something like that? It will eventually. Uh, I mean, Mika part one is already in effect and we we have used that in our dialogue with with, with the banks. But it's like they still don't realize, like, oh yeah, Mika is in fact, oh that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like they 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 don't realize, or maybe they they still have a mindset. I think it, the the ones who uh, runs the, you know decides the 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 narrative within the bank, they they're quite aware of what, what is going on. Perhaps they don't understand Bitcoin as well, um, but. Then a bank, like a normal bank in Sweden, is like 10,000 employees or maybe 15. And it takes time because they've been pushing this negative narrative for many years. So even if it's actually going the other way now, it takes time until the entire organization is is uh, realizing, okay, now we have to, now we should like Bitcoin instead. So slowly. So I would say maybe in a year, uh even if after mika is implemented fully the banks will maybe if if someone challenged the, 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 them with a, a lawsuit or something that 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 could speed up the process that actually happened in norway not with mika but with a normal banking guarantee uh, but in sweden uh, it it hasn't happened did it ever cross your mind that you, you might leave <laughs> sweden behind and and do the same thing somewhere else yeah, no, ma ma many times. No, I actually in 2019, uh, in the end of uh, 2019, I, I, me and my family, we moved to uh, Singapore. It's like, okay, this is a good hub for, for crypto and Bitcoin and uh, like, uh, seems like an interesting hub to, to reach uh, Asia at, at large. Uh, but then the, the pandemic came a few months later and, and we decided to, okay, let's go back to Sweden. It's a bit more safe. Uh, or at least uh, familiar. And then we also went to Madeira to check Madeira out because that's like still Europe and it's a, a beautiful island. Um, but also it, it didn't come a pandemic when we moved there, but but we felt like, okay, this is this is really an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So it, it's it's a bit small to say. Uh, yeah, but, so but Sweden there. was a good good place to be in the pandemic, I, I, I remember. I think they had kind of the 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 most freedom focused rules uh, from most of the countries or uh, I, I think it was sweden right yes yes correct there was no lockdown uh, everything was voluntarily and 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 the government just gave uh, guidelines and uh, the funny thing is when when the, the pandemic broke out and we had the the, the biggest wave the, it was a recommendation you know don't go to work if you have to avoid public transport and 80% were like yeah, okay, let's work from home w without any, you know, lockdowns. So it's, uh, I would definitely say that lockdowns is is so unnecessary in, in, in those aspects because people in general don't want uh, a virus that might be lethal for them. So you, you, you don't need to force <laughs> someone to be at home when there's a virus running around. But yeah, no, so so no, Sweden was actually quite nice. So it's super interesting. On the one side, they they are fighting Bitcoin, but then when it comes to the virus, where the whole world was kind of <laughs> on on uh, on like one trajectory, oh, we have lockdowns. There were really not a lot of countries. Was Sweden the only one? Were the other countries even like they had no lockdowns? I don't remember. But the whole uh, world is kind of in that tra trajectory and Sweden is like, no, no, like now we let it, uh, the free market <laughs> decide. But with Bitcoin, it's like, no, no, like, okay, Bitcoin in America, the president is talking about it and they implement it, BlackRock likes it, but we will fight against it. <laughs> like it's, an, yeah. it's, a, it's a weird thing, like they have that. 
So Sweden has an interesting history when it comes to finance. Um, one of the biggest and most influential families in, in Sweden is uh, Wallenberg. They're, they're part of the Bilderberg uh, group or association. Uh, they were co-founding the Federal Reserve in America. And the Swedish Riksbank is still the oldest running uh, Riks, the central bank in, in the Western uh, countries or maybe in the world it's about 400 and that was also uh, co-founded from this uh, family uh, so so, the, so they have a tradition of uh, I don't know um, what to call it but tradition of, of fiat <laughs> running back many hundred years so it could be linked to to, to that that this family uh, is so um, invested in, in the fiat system that they really don't like Bitcoin uh, and, and, and they are like controlling the, the financial area. And when it comes to um, yeah, uh, health concerns, there, there, there's, of course, we have a big medical company, uh, but the, the, the government structure in Sweden, all this, the smaller governments, we have a lot of you know, branches, they're kind of decentralized in one way. Uh, so so they, it's, it's not the top... Uh, parliament that, that's uh, deciding what, what to do a lockdown or not so it could be yeah and, and and that's like the really interesting thing with sweden because it's a small country you don't have that many banks and and uh, and the major bank is owned by this family and uh, if you look at the financial supervisor many people go there to to uh, to get a, a merit for your cv uh, so you go there, you work a few years, and then uh, your goal is mostly to have a job at a bank. So they, they don't want to do something that is bad for, for their career. So since you have that uh, interaction of, of people, a flow of people, the Financial Conduct Authority is uh, very friendly to the, to the bank big banks. I assume when, when uh, BTCX become as big as the bigger banks, we will start to employ all these people from the government and they just, then they will <laughs> become friendly to us as well. But so far, we, we're too small for that. Um, I think you started the, the BTCX quite early. Uh, was it 2012, uh, what I read? That that is the super early, wow! So like you you had uh, you you fight for for that since a in the long time. Indeed, so two thousand yeah we launched in January two thousand and twelve. Uh, mostly like a hobby project. Is is there an interest for for Bitcoin in uh, in Sweden? And at that time we we bought Bitcoin at Mount Gox in Japan. So it was quite. It took long time and it was quite a, a challenge to 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 actually buy Bitcoin. Um, but for me, that was also my aha moment for Bitcoin. I, I was sending, I think it was 50 euro or 500 Swedish kroner to, to Japan. And it took almost seven days. And it costed, I think it was like 15% of in transaction fee in the end. And then I bought Bitcoin at Mt. Gox. And at that time, uh, all wallets, or there wasn't that many wallets, but the the Bitcoin QT wallet, you saw it re already in the wallet when you had zero confirmation. So it was like super fast. So I was sitting there having sent my money, went waited for a week, and then I took withdraw from the Mt. Gox. And the same uh, millisecond I pressed withdraw, it popped up in my wallet. And, and, and that feeling for me was like, holy crap, this will, you know, cut the... <laughs> Cut the, the competition in pieces, uh, and and so so from from that I, I realized okay this this will change the entire financial system that we have and uh, and I had had that feeling ever since since that day. So for you it was the the medium of exchange size of things what what made you really get Bitcoin in the beginning? Yeah, so I have zero background in finance. I'm a quantum physicist, computer nerd. So I was studying uh, quantum physics and uh, computer science and some astrology, nothing about money. But the funny thing is my, my mom, who is also Bitcoin maxi, she's actually more Bitcoin maxi than, <laughs> than I am. I have dabbled in alternative coins like Litecoin and Dogecoin. Uh, she's only owned Bitcoin, which is quite impressive. Uh, but she, she 
built the first uh, internet bank in, in Sweden back in the 90s. But otherwise from that, I have no experience with mommy, money. So all my uh, experience with, with the financial system, I have learned during the way uh, with running a Bitcoin company. And I would say every day I learn something new about the legacy finance system, uh, which makes me like, oh shit, it's, it's even worse. I mean, every day I, I find something new. <laughs> it's like, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm super grateful that, that I found Bitcoin early or not. In one way, it really doesn't matter. The, the only important thing is that we have a system that is free to use. It's, uh, it's, it's fairly and transparently built uh, and it's un, uncorruptible, the protocol itself. And, and for me, that's, that, that really gives me you know, hope for, for the future. Uh, and for my my family and kids, so so that's yeah really good. Um, I had uh, Oz also on the podcast, and uh, he was also in Vienna uh, a guest to me, and and we we did the podcast in person. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know why, but uh, for some reason you came up in the discussion, and he, he and I said to him, "Oh, I will also have him on the podcast." And he said to me, "Please ask him why his exchange is pink." <laughs> so, uh. so I, 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 I will fulfill his I will fulfill his dream and and ask him now why 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 pink why why that color. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we used to be uh, orange, surprise, surprise, orange, uh, dark gray. Uh, and then, no, it's, yeah, it's kind of funny. But it's, uh, then I, I saw a, um, a Bitcoin movie. It was a blockbuster movie. It was uh, uh, broadcast in, in all uh, movie theaters all over the world. Uh, and the name of the Bitcoin movie is Barbie. Uh, I, 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 I don't think norm, norm is... Uh, or no coiners or how to call them realize it's a bitcoin movie but but if you put on your bitcoin glasses it's clearly a bitcoin movie and you see like the patriarch is the fiat system it's controlled it's like top uh, down uh, and it's all about getting ahead of, of everyone else right uh, and the Barbie community, they just have money and it works and there's no drama about it. It's no, they don't need a, a government or policy around it. It's just fair and equal system that, that works. And that's obviously Bitcoin. And, and um, if you haven't seen the movie, they, they actually have a war in, in <laughs> a war erupts uh, between the, the patriarch and the matriarch and the, uh, and you can see it, it's like the, the fiat system and the, and the Bitcoin system is, is undergoing a war. So I, I saw that movie and like, holy shit, okay. Um, both that, okay, Barbie is a Bitcoin movie, but then it's like we, uh, women really need Bitcoin because they are uh, in the current system very uh, much, um, what to say, they, they're not as far ahead in the game, in the fiat game. And in some countries, uh, women are not even allowed to have a bank account or even own money. And uh, from, from my perspective, not being woke or anything like that, but I truly believe that uh, the feminine and the masculine force, uh, like life force, uh, should be equally balanced. And when we have a balance between the masculine and the feminine, the world looks uh, naturally more har harmonized. And one way to, to find this harmony is to, to, to use, utilize Bitcoin. And, and from that, I also realized, okay, but Bitcoin is um, it, it's a feminine force. It's not a masculine uh, controlling uh, or dominant force. It's, it's an inclusive force. It was just like, okay, I, uh, I, I, I want to emphasize this. And we changed the color from orange to, to pink. So... That's did, the story. did the color influence or positively impact the quote of how many women buy Bitcoin on your exchange? Do you even have that information? <laughs> we, we do have the information. I haven't checked. I mean, it was quite, quite recently we changed the color. It was before the summer. And we, we haven't seen any significant uptick but we haven't done any marketing either but we, what we are doing we we have uh, women only uh, meetups in our office which is taking place so we think th this is 
probably a more longer uh, marketing trajectory and also for, for the entire community to uh, to think about because it's very masculine dominated but but women are are catching up more and more so so it, it's uh, and also my my wife she is now working in the company and she started this like a few weeks after <laughs> we changed to 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 pink uh or actually the color is not pink it's actually magenta but it's yeah more or less the same so i think it's a gradual shift uh and then also from a marketing perspective i haven't seen any uh pink or magenta bitcoin company out there so we we might be the the, the only pink bitcoin <laughs> If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self-custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the Bitcoin Way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much exchange <laughs> And I think it definitely works in terms of like it, it, uh, you see it. I saw the car, uh, that you were talking about at Bitcoin Prague and it was like, so like you, you could see it from afar. You're like, oh yeah, that's, that's the Sweden uh, car that was coming. You saw it on Twitter before <laughs> yeah. and now it's here. I think it's, it's great marketing also. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the, the car with the Bitcoin license plate and, and the pink color is, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, another funny thing is, uh, so I, I drive around with 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 the Bitcoin car uh, in in Stockholm, and I can just see sometimes you know I just park in the middle of the city, uh, take a coffee nearby and 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 work, and then I can see people uh, looking at the car, or actually they're looking at the Bitcoin. We have big Bitcoin stickers and the sign and whatever, and um, I I can I can. Just by watching how people interact with, with with the Bitcoin branding, I can see like where the momentum in the market is, and I can say that currently, uh, since I would say maybe two since two weeks back, more and more people are interacting with it. So I, it's really a momentum building in 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 at least in, in Stockholm, but we have a lot of tourists here, so and, and more people are turning the head, more people are picking up the phone and taking picture of, of, of the Bitcoin signs. So I, I, I think it's, um, if you want a measure of something, that's the measure saying that the, it, the market is, is starting to, to wake up now. So Absol it's time to, <laughs> time to hit that buy button again. <laughs> it's, I think it's, it's definitely uh, nice. I also um, catch myself now checking the price again. 
I actually did not do that for the, I think the whole summer. Uh, and, uh, it, it started right now because now it's like, this is excitement is, is more here. Uh, more and more people keep asking about Bitcoin. Like, I feel like we are in a, right now actually at the start of the the bull run o obviously yes the last year bitcoin went up significantly like it's not that we like completely sideways like the bitcoin price a year ago uh was way lower than now but it didn't feel like a bull run it, it it felt like sideways for some reason but now i feel like we actually on the cusp of 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 a of a major bull run most likely uh, so that, that, that feels, um, it feels better now. And, and I catch myself checking the price more often. Uh, and like just a few months ago, I didn't check it for like months sometimes, like, uh, because I re truly didn't care. But now sometimes like two or three times a day. And that's really a lot for me <laughs> to, to, to check the Bitcoin price. I, I think we can decide that the bull market is just about to start. We, we, we decide that? Yeah, yeah. you and me. <laughs> okay, so now is the start. Yes, <laughs> let, it's decided. Let, let, let's revisit that. Uh, let's do a podcast, a second round in one year, and then then see how much it went up. Do you have some yes. some some way of of thinking about the price? Uh, some some like uh, framework about like where where, you, where we will be if uh, if we actually do a podcast in one year? Yeah, I, I usually have that, but but funny enough, I I don't have that uh, this cycle. I think my let's say my internal models broke when we hit all-time high in in uh, yeah during the bitcoin atlantis that was actually really great and yeah so 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 my 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 sense i i, I don't have like a, a like an algorithm i use but it's like a you know hand waving and and that model is kind of okay there's so much new monetary energy that enters the bitcoin ecosystem now so it's 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 a, it's a, I would I would say the price is now a new kind of animal. Uh, I I'm not that familiar with it, but uh, definitely it will go up. Uh, so in let's say in one year, if I'm just gonna grab a number, let's say two hundred percent from today. Two hundred percent. That's a free X, right? Uh, so that that's uh, from here on out. That would be sixty five k. Oh man, I'm really bad in math. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it in the that, show that, notes. Yeah, that, that's that's 195k. So let's say two, 200 percent, and then we are at uh, 200k. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that, that that's an easy thing thing to remember. I think with the actual price, we might even be a little bit before uh, before we're with sexy seven or something like that. But yeah, um, that, that sounds about right. Um, one question that I, I, I've had before we move off the, the Barbie topic, I have one more Barbie question. Um, if you had to recommend a Bitcoin movie, would you still recommend Barbie or more <laughs> Matrix? Like if you just, if you can just recommend only one movie uh, that is a Bitcoin movie and not directly about Bitcoin um, is, is Barbie or, or Matrix the, the bigger one. Uh, all right. It's, it's not supposed to be a, a Bitcoin movie. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Like I, th I think both like for me, Matrix and I just um, uh, watch for the first time ever actually the third part of it. I only watched the first part and now I, I, I start to watch the third part. I never came to it. That's why Matrix right now is in my head, and I'm like, oh shit, like that. That's a great meme for Bitcoin. That's a great meme for Bitcoin. It's it's like you you watch it five ten minutes, and you're like, I can use that exact um, comparison for Bitcoin. So for me, Matrix was always this big movie that is not about Bitcoin, but as a Bitcoiner, you constantly think about Bitcoin. And I did not watch Barbie, uh, so but I I, I think I have to. <laughs> have to do that now <laughs> because you made yeah. me curious about it uh, uh good good question um, um, uh, there's actually a, a couple of movies that pops up in my mind right now Mo matrix is of course um a classic bitcoin movie um barbie is a good one but it's if if, if you're not a bitcoiner you you will not i think it will be hard to notice it uh, and then fight club i really enjoy uh it also ends with with really uh, um, ending the, the the fiat system, or at least parts of it. But it's a bit uh, violent. But that's Matrix as well. Um, 
what else? Yeah, Interstellar is also extremely good. Uh, but I haven't seen uh, Fight Club or Interstellar for a long time, so it's hard to to decide. But um, so then I then I'll go for uh, then I'll go for the, the Barbie movie. I love that a lot. Really, really cool. It's, uh, I, I, I think, uh, I have to really watch it now. Um, my, my girlfriend will be very happy because we did not watch it till now. <laughs> exactly. Watch it with, uh, um, a woman and see if you, if you can, um, uh, use the movie to, to orange pill oh, or wait. pink so, pill. So, so you think that, uh, with the Barbie movie, you can orange peel a uh, woman. You should try. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I find it very hard. I mean, I I, I got orange peeled extremely fast with Bitcoin. Um, so I can just share a short story about when I found Bitcoin. It was in 2011. Uh, I went to this free open source software meetup uh, in a basement with a lot of uh, geeks, uh, computer geeks and and. Uh, and, and nice people and I was sitting there with my laptop everyone had their laptop or some other computer device and uh, I was complaining about the financial system and the guy next to me who is still unknown I don't know who orange spilled me uh, he said that oh yeah but have you looked about bitcoin like oh what's that oh, it's open source money and for me that was the orange pill open source plus money uh, I love open source. I mean, that the community contribute, et cetera. It, all, all the values are, are, are aligning and, and open source money. So that, that was the thing that, that made me uh, start with Bitcoin. But for my wife, it was different. I mean, I've been trying to orange peel her for, for, for 10 years. And then she was uh, driving my car and I had a podcast in the car playing Peter McCormack's, uh, one of his episodes. And my wife, she's half British and Cormac is, is Brit, so so she instantly synchronized with his humor. So in, for her, she was like, "Oh, but this is funny. Maybe I should listen to more about Bitcoin." So so humor was the first step for her, and then she she uh, read a, a book written by a Swedish uh, person, uh, Björn uh, Tisjö. Uh, he, he wrote a book called Bitcoin Handboken, which is like the, the Bitcoin manual. A very short and sweet book and she read it in maybe one hour and then uh, after that she was like fuck we have to have more bitcoin i was like what yes now i mean the fiat system it, it was like it clicked for her so it's it, <laughs> 10 years it took for 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 uh for her to to you know living with me for for many years and, and a book finally sealed it so so it's difficult to know what actually will orange pill someone so looking at a barbie movie could be one puzzle piece of the puzzle i love it a lot i, I will definitely try it and now i have a good answer why 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 pink uh, and <laughs> i will send it to us definitely <laughs> Um, coming back to Bitcoin and, and where do you see it? It's really interesting when you are in Bitcoin that long in 2011, um, you probably had a way different view on Bitcoin back then than you have now. You probably have learned a lot and, and developed your view on Bitcoin. Um, maybe shortly explain this, uh, how, how differently you view it. And maybe then also how do you think Bitcoin's role will be like in 10, 20, 30 years from now? Where do you see Bitcoin growing? Not from a price perspective, but literally like what's the role of Bitcoin in the future in our uh, society? I could start with saying that understanding Bitcoin is a vast subject. I I started reading the white paper, trying to understand it from a technical perspective. And it is, it's, it, it's a short and sweet white paper, but still it's, its logic is not easily understood. And you can see this, that, that many smart people, Michael Saylor, for example, uh, Elon Musk, etc. at first they don't get Bitcoin. And then suddenly something happens and then, then Michael Saylor really went all in. I wouldn't say Elon understand Bitcoin yet, uh, but he has at least tried to do it a few times. It's a journey, definitely. And, and for me, that journey is still ongoing. I'm still learning new aspects of Bitcoin. I, I was like, 
oh shit, okay, you can see it uh, from this perspective as well. So, so for me, Bitcoin has been, I mean, as I said, uh, open source money was my first entrance point. Like, yes, of course, money should be open. It should be a, a, a standard that anyone could use. And then realizing like, okay, fixed supply, uh, and, and not buying into the, the narrative that a 2% inflation is something good. 2% inflation is ex, uh, extremely bad for the society, which you're bearing the fruits of right now. Uh, and, and, and that takes also a lot of perspective. Uh, so so I, I would say, and, of, yeah, and then mining, which is a really silly, uh, 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 what do you say, narrative. Bitcoin mining, I, I, when I talk about it nowadays, I say, no, it's uh, block producers because that's, they, they're producing a block uh, uh, and, and validating the transaction and, and putting a, a sign as signature seal of approval, which is the SHA-256 uh, number that they, they've calculated. But let's call it mining now. Um, mining is also very hard to grasp how it's actually working. And it is the innovation or discovery, as some, some would like to see it. That is the discovery of, of, of Bitcoin, the, 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 the mining. And the other parts are just a, a very beautiful way to, to put the, 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 the pieces of the algorithm together. So, and, and that's also another aspect, like the, the beauty of the simplicity. And uh, for many years, many still people say, oh, okay, but there will be a better Bitcoin. I say, <laughs> no, there won't, because every other blockchain or copycat or, or uh, crypto adds something it uh, makes the system more complex but no one has managed of all the millions of, of projects i mean it's open source so anyone can copy it have failed to make it more simple and and that's also like like oh shit this is the most simple way to create a currency that is you know functioning as it is uh, and and that's also like a, a huge aha feeling and then, of course, I'm a quantum physicist. So looking at the, the way, how can we secure a system using the most simple form of transaction <laughs> there is in, in the universe, which is energy. The most simple form of work is energy. And having a monetary uh, or, or a currency or a system using energy uh, as as a, as a basis level is also like mind blowing, and this was something that both um, Harrison Ford and maybe it was Tesla as well. I don't recall. Yeah, I think it was Tesla a uh, hundred years ago was trying to achieve like an energy buck, and they failed because they hadn't the technology as we have today. We we have the the computer. Uh, that helps us to, to achieve this. So we needed to discover both the computer and then the, the, the algorithm of, of mining to, to, to achieve Bitcoin. And so, so from a scientific perspective, this is also like mind blowing. So, so there's so many aspects of Bitcoin that are just so elegantly and, and timely to occur right now or 2008, which is uh, so fascinating. So I, I, I still learn new things about Bitcoin that, that fascinates me. And looking ahead in, in the future, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very difficult to, to see where this will be heading. Uh, we have this major fiat system on steroids. And uh, the, the best way to, to, to look at the future uh, or to predict the future is, is to build it yourself. And the second best is to look at, at, at the history. And you, you can see like so many times we had a currency, we also always had a currency and always someone have tried to manipulate it, create more of that currency. And if we have gold as, a, as, a, as the currency, the, the, the king is trying to dilute the gold with something else, you know, Always, always, always. But the monetary system has never had a digital way that is connected to everyone and so easily diluted 
I mean, it's ridiculously easy to dilute the currency today. And you can see it in the dollar, you can see it in the Swedish kroner and the euro. So I think we'll have the, a historical fiat crash. Uh, I mean, we, we're basically living in, the, in the, the biggest fiat bubble ever created by man. And we have this uh, Bitcoin uh, invention at the, at the same time. So it's almost like this is so perfectly fitted. So, so I'm also buying into that time travel narrative that, that Satoshi is a time traveler. It's like, okay, mankind will eradicate itself when the fiat bur bubble burst. <laughs> so I would go to 2008 <laughs> and place the white paper here. Um, but yeah, but it's, it's still very hard to see where, where, where we will end up. But, uh, but I really uh, hope and wish for a peaceful resolution and that we manage to get uh, humanity over to a, a Bitcoin standard and, and build like best possible world we can could achieve. Uh, because we have a lot of energy. Uh, we never had so much energy production in the world as we have. And then we also have the tools for communication and now we have the monetary system and the innovation. Uh, so, so hopefully we enter a new golden age um, when we merge to the, the Bitcoin standard. I, I loved it so much. I never heard that, like it's so fascinating. I. I have now almost 300 podcast episodes with a Bitcoin podcast. I, I do it daily, but I never heard the theory that Satoshi Nakamoto is a time traveler. That's, and then, <laughs> it never came up fast. So like the theory is that Satoshi Nakamoto is a time traveler from the future. He saw how humanity was going bad with fear. And that's why he came uh, back just in time to invent uh, Bitcoin and get people uh, to adopt uh, a sound money digital standard. Yes, and you can see it in the first block. I mean, canceller on the brink of the second bailout. So it's it's really like it's a statement, like the fiat system is going way ho. But yeah, it, I I I I don't say I believe that theory, but it's it's a it's a very it's a very nice theory. I love that uh, Bitcoin proves that uh, time traveling is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that, that would be like the perfect last piece of the Bitcoin puzzle. Yeah, that, uh, that would be uh, amazing. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's an, a really cool topic. Uh, one last question that I have for you, uh, maybe an interesting one. Um, when we look at the fiat world and when you look at also the banking world and, and uh, uh, no coiners, what do you think is right now the biggest misconception among those who uh, publicly are against Bitcoin? I, I'm not talking about the no coiners who just like didn't do any research, but the, the people that actually say like, oh, like Bitcoin is a scam, like Jamie Diamond, or like Bitcoin uh, is not good for like the, like the central bankers. Or is it with them just they, they hate it so much? Uh, or, or are there really like things in their head like, oh, like Bitcoin cannot work because of that? What, what, what do you think uh, that is? Yes, it's both. Uh, some people don't have the incentives. I mean, they are to, 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 to like Bitcoin uh, because they are so invested in the, the, the central bank um, fiat system. So, so anything that disrupts that is uh, bad for them. So that, that's one. And, and, and they maybe understand Bitcoin or not, or maybe it really doesn't matter. But then you have the other part that, that is um, just don't understand Bitcoin. And uh, it, it's kind of understandable because it is tricky to understand the aspects. Or it, it could be that they might misconcept um, I mean, there's there's so many misconceptions about Bitcoin, so it's 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 uh, mad. It's like yeah, it's it, yeah. Oh, never mind. Um, so it's hard to pick one uh, misconception about Bitcoin, but it all yeah. I guess if, if there's someone, for example, the the the, cent, the general of the central bank in Sweden, he he said he wants to uh, make sure Bitcoin does not get integrated to the banking system. For him, I, I think th his misconception is he's, he's, he's missing the power of Bitcoin or rather the, the network effect. 
And what, what or game theory? What are the consequences of, of playing Bitcoin in the wrong way? And uh, one of the consequences happened, was it a hundred years ago? or something like that. You had a, 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 the, the world was living in both a gold standard and a silver standard. And the price difference was roughly the same difference as, as the abundance of, of the, the, the natural resources scattered around the earth. Um, but after, now I don't remember exactly what, what dates and, and, and a series of events, but what happened is that China and India were on the silver standard and the Western countries were on the gold standard. And the, the silver standard lost as, as a world resource, uh, world reserve currency. So the gold price skyrocketed and the silver was plummeted. And the game theory is quite easy. If you, if you sit on the uh, wrong uh, world reserve currency, you will get poor. And yes, uh, I think India lost about between 75 and 80% of their wealth uh, because they're sitting on silver. And, and China lost even more. I think they lost about 80, maybe 85%. So basically, they, 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 they played the, the game theory wrong. And, and, and that's, from a central bank perspective, is the biggest risk they're taking and the misconception they're, they're doing is that, that they are miscalculating the, the network effect of, of, of Bitcoin. So sitting many central banks today, they're sitting with American dollars and they're sitting with gold. I don't think gold will be worthless. If you have the gold price and the Bitcoin price, the Bitcoin price will fly away. Uh, and, and the central banks and the countries sitting on, on only a gold standard will become poor, basically. Interesting. I think, yeah, it's, it's super interesting when you think about all those people who are um, against Bitcoin or like uh, cur currently having some problems understanding it. Uh, I think the the, big, the the best point you brought up is like the power, the game theory, they don't get what really like the, that they don't really have a choice. <laughs> so they either have to uh, join it or uh, they will lose out in a, in a big way. That's why I'm also really impressed with some German banks that already try to adopt it and really try to um, embrace it, even have like Bitcoin uh, conferences in Germany. Like it, it's a big, big thing. Uh, and those are probably the commercial banks that uh, will win. I don't know how a central bank can uh, embrace it outside of just buying it from a game theory perspective, but it doesn't seem like Sweden will be the first one to do that. <laughs> uh, and I think Swiss, didn't Swiss buy MicroStrategy to stock? Uh, I, I heard some, like Swiss is probably like the closest one to, 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 to buy actual Bitcoin, but I heard something that they, they are with, with MicroStrategy, but that's unconfirmed. I, I'm, I, I I'm not sure if that's true, uh, but yeah, it's game theory is playing out. I, I, I love how how we actually can see that in the in the world already. It also ties back to what we were talking in the in the beginning. Uh, I really like what what you said there. Really cool. Uh, also, um, we have an routine in the podcast about two questions. The first question is always the same question for for each guest, uh, and it is, "What can we learn from you?" Uh, besides Bitcoin? Mm, I would like to give a um, piece of advice or, or practice. And um, that is to, to practice, uh, well, I would say two things. And, and one is um, to practice the, the, the time horizon, which you, you think and act from. And in, in, instead of having uh, I mean, the, the, the fiat world encourage uh, short, short sight and, and not planning uh, long ahead. Um, and uh, ir ironically, one, one thing to practice um, thinking ahead or, or planning a, a long time in the future is to uh, be in, in the present. So it's kind of counterintuitive uh, in one way. But so I, I would just, you know, like to give that thought that take uh, extra breath uh, when you can think about it and come to the present moment 
and from there you can expand your time horizon actually how how far in the future you 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 like so th that is the gift i would like to give to the to the listener after a lot um really really being in present is is probably more important uh than than looking in the future <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, e e e even though sometimes it's it's good to, to to see far ahead. Yeah. Really cool. Thank you so much. I have an end routine of the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And this is an interesting one. Um, we already had the same question kind of for for movies, but now we have the same questions again for songs. <laughs> if there ah. was if if there was a Bitcoin song, uh, which song would it be? Uh, <laughs> uh, so what pops up in my mind is, um, of course, ABBA being from Sweden, and it's uh, they have a song called Money, Money, Money. <laughs> I'm not sure how that translates into Bitcoin, but it's uh, it's a lovely song and it uh, gets you to think about money and uh, and uh, it's a good time to to think about what is money anyway. I love it a lot. So, uh, I, I I thought yeah. it, uh, maybe the the song uh, "Pump It Up." You you know it. Yeah, yeah, yes. You get yes. to pump it up. You know, bump it up. I love that song so much. And I think even on YouTube, one of the first uh, most liked comments is like, that's the official Bitcoin song or something like that. So uh, it's, it's, it seems to be, <laughs> for, for me, that would be a, a big, a big one also on there. Yeah, that's a funny song. Definitely. Really cool. Then, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Christian, for, for, for being on the show. Before I let you go, where can people find you, ask you questions, DM you, uh, find the exchange and everything? Yeah, so the exchange is uh, bt.cx uh, and I'm mostly active on uh, Twitter or X, but it's also my, my biggest uh, addiction. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, <laughs> scale down on that, but that's still my, my go-to. Uh, and my, my nickname is a bit complicated, but it's Ander Chris, or it starts with an N. So it's my, my last name plus Chris afterwards, so Ander Chris. I have it in my YouTube description uh, or any podcast Perfect. platform where you listen, it's in the description. So basically people can just directly go there. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for taking the time, Christian. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Thank you, Robin. Bye-bye.